Let's talk about the white elephant in the room. That's the rain. Mother Nature has not been nice to us lately for the past week and a half. We've had a steady downpour, high percent chances, like 30% and below. Those are the windows of opportunity that we've been just rolling the dice on, trying to get out there and do a few hours. If we can get that much in, then we're lucky. Um, what I want to know from you guys is has it affected your style of fishing has it like it has it affected your chances of catching fish uh i know there are a lot of people i used to be one of them but no longer am that person that thinks too much rain dropped in the area like what we've been experiencing lately it lowers our salinity level now i know to a certain extent it is going to lower it but is it gonna lower it enough to where it affects the fish being inside the marsh? And what I've experienced as of recent is that, no, it doesn't. Like what we're experiencing right now has no effect or impact on being able to catch fish. I'm not gonna say being able to catch good quality fish, it's just being able to catch fish in general because I'm a perfect like test subject to go out there in the marsh and I've been able to catch speckled trout and then for the most part, a lot of us know that you need some high salinity level to be able to catch those guys. Well, they're in the marsh. What I'm puzzled on is that the reds are not out there. I have not been able to find them and stay on them because we have too much rain coming down. And so when I do find them, I'm not able to go back the next day or maybe two days later to try and see if they're still in the same area because the high percent chances of rain. Now I could do that if I weren't gonna film. All the equipment that I take with me, it has to be like unprotected. Uh, I could throw the waterproof doors on my GoPros, but what's gonna happen is that the GoPro gets so hot that the lens fogs up and whenever the rain cools everything down, there's just like a, a a steady mist on the lens and that right there I'm just gonna have to constantly be worrying about that that I can't even worry about fishing it makes it not fun so we need somewhat fair weather and 30% and below is what's gonna allow us to be able to go out there and film productively so that we can produce a video for y'all to watch uh, the the rain that falls down my knowledge of it is whenever it, it lands in like a, a big area of land, uh, that stuff has to drain out. And so that goes into the creeks and everything, and then it makes its way into the marsh system, into the bayou, out into the intercoastal or the bay, and then out into the gulf. Uh, that has really not affected anything. I have been able to find speckled trout like I said, in the bayou, feeding right next to the uh, the oyster, and they are in deep pools. I've found those guys there. Um, the one thing that I did notice is that you need moving water. The tidal movement has to be either incoming, outgoing. There has to be a nice, strong tidal movement in order to get those guys active and feeding. Now for the reds, where have I found them? Not in the bayous, that's for darn sure. Uh, they have been in the furthest reaches of the back lake, six inches or less. That's where I have found those guys this time of year. And if they're there, you gotta be throwing whatever it is that they wanna bite because in some of my videos, you'll see where I'm having trouble with grass or I'm just having trouble with presenting them the lure in a manner that makes them want to take it. Plus the lure itself. Am I throwing the right thing? Because sometimes you're going to spook these guys when they're that shallow. You can't throw these big lures that uh, some of us like to sling because it's our confidence stuff. So you have to be able to go down to finesse or maybe even live bait. I, I was thinking like if I had live shrimp with me the on one of those particular trips, I think we probably could have unloaded on the reds they were feeding on shrimp i saw the shrimp jumping uh above the the water surface and the reds were just chasing those guys down and then other reds i don't think they were able to be caught because they were in a comatose state their belly in the mud they're not moving you don't know that they're there because the water is so muddy that's one thing that i do know about the rain is that it makes any water 
just super chocolatey. I mean, we are talking milk chocolate stuff that you can't even see one, maybe two inches down below that surface. So these guys are there, belly in the mud, and as your kayak goes over them, and you're, I'm talking super like sneaky ninja mode, you're not making any noise whatsoever, you're push-pulling, and it's not until your kayak or your paddle hits one of these guys or goes right next to one that it wakes them up, boom, they dart off, you can hear them drumming underneath the kayak, and you're like, what am I doing wrong? Like. I know I just cast right here in the path of where I just brought my kayak to and those guys didn't want to bite. And it was really like a tough pill to swallow because you start to question your abilities as a fisherman to be able to like put the lure in front of their face and get them to bite. And then we're talking, you're slinging all your confidence up. You're not going out there trying to throw something that you want to test out because as it is the conditions are really bad and you need to make the most of your time that's going to be able to put the fish in the boat so therefore you go with the confidence lures and when they don't bite that it starts to throw doubt in your mind and uh yeah this is right here my way of saying let's do an open dialogue some of y'all have more fishing knowledge than what i do and drop your comments down below uh, what's been your experience whenever we've had prolonged like days of rain that ha has just not let you go out there and then when you do go out there because of the break in the weather um, what's made you successful I'm pretty sure there's a lot of us me included that want to to speed our learning curve and be able to take advantage of, of some of these things um, I know that it's not for a lack of trying as far as myself going out there. Uh, today's one of those days we've got rain outside so I couldn't even do my morning workout and Christian wakes up and says, hey dad, are we gonna go fishing? I'm like, yes, we just have to wait for a break in the weather and then we'll pound the bank. That's another thing. I have been having to choose like styles of fishing that's going to allow us the best opportunity to stay out there, not get soaked, not subject the camera equipment to getting wet and then broken. So we've been doing stuff like around bridges, uh, running over to the jetty, trying to bank fish. Today we wanted to do some wade fishing at a particular spot, but overnight the weather has just like downgraded to high chances of rain and so we couldn't go out there it would have just been a waste of our money and gas and resources and then at the end of the day we probably would not have been able to produce a video or we're going to go out there waste our time wait for that window and then hop out of the truck start filming as quickly as we can hoping that the tidal movement is going to be just right so like everything has to align everything that we know about fishing it's just been a little bit tough. I'm not complaining by any means. I am very grateful for y'all watching these videos and allowing us to do what it is that I absolutely love doing, and that's fishing. Uh, this right here, again, is just an open dialogue for us to start letting those creative juices as, as far as being able to, to catch fish, stay on the fish. This is what you need to go to. I'm letting y'all know what I have to do in order to be successful. And I'm just talking like catching the big dinks uh, because catching keepers, it's really tough. And with the rain itself and the conditions, it makes it a lot tougher than just a normal day out on the water whenever we have nice sunshine, clouds, and everything else. So the tactics that I've been using are nothing but confidence lures. And then when those don't work, we take the insurance policy of live bait. I've been getting used to using Croker. Uh, they are god awful expensive. We went to, what was it, Fat Boys, and man, they charge a lot of money. They're proud of their bait, but that's not the liveliest stuff. So if at all possible, I would stay away from those guys, go to Smitty's where they do take care of the bait. I don't know what they cost at Smitty's because I've never purchased them there before, but Fat Boys, $12 for a dozen. That's $1 for every croaker that you're gonna use. And when you get it in such bad condition, it's just, it's, uh, yeah, neither here nor there. Let's steer clear of the negativity and uh, talking bad about bait shops. But 
We've been using live croaker and I, I like it. It's, uh, it's ability to catch some big fish. It's up there on the list. Uh, we also use the live shrimp and uh, we're starting to see the nice medium size. And uh, that's what we have to resort to in order to try and stay on the fish. Whenever they don't feel like feeding on artificials, they're not active and chasing stuff down, the live bait will have a tendency to get the job done over the artificial stuff. And yeah, um, so that's some of the things we've been doing, going under the bridges, trying to stay dry, uh, resorting to night fishing because the chances of rain at nighttime have been lower than they have during the daytime. But night fishing presents its own set of problems. Low light conditions, GoPros not filming really well. So we have to turn to lights like this right here these are very expensive and they don't last very long uh, you'd have to keep it on the lowest setting and having some of those lights positioned just perfectly um, it, it presents its own set of challenges with capturing the content because for the most part all you're going to see is a dark screen the galveston causeway the lights are out there underneath that bridge and it just makes it really hard to film at night and then everything just is amplified as far as the difficulty level. Uh, seeing to retie lures and, and uh, to rig up soft plastics and then maybe possibly even hook your bait if you're going to use bait at nighttime. It's just really tough. But uh, those are the things that we're resorting to in order to get out there and experience some decent fishing. Maybe we just need to figure out like how to protect our camera equipment during the rain as long as there's no lightning i'm not opposed to getting wet i used to do it all the time before i considered youtube like my full-time job and yeah uh yeah what else is there um i just wanted to talk about the rain that's for sure and yeah i guess that's it i mean i'm running out of content over on the mdlr fishing channel because we can't get out there on the steady and uh like i'm <laughs> i'm having to talk about lures how it is that i fish them some people like that but for the bulk of my audience uh, they don't really go there to watch like how i rig lures or how it is that i'm fishing those lures uh, why i use those lures and blah 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 uh they just want to see fishing content. They want to see where it is that I'm fishing so that they know, they get an idea of what's going on on the water. And so those videos don't do too well. A lot of people watch my channel. I've come to the conclusion that a lot of them watch my channel solely because they want to know what's going on on the water. They could care less. It's like, hey, where is he at? They fast forward through the video. Okay, he caught this, he caught that. Yep, nothing but dinks. Uh, we don't want to go. And then off they go. So, I mean, at least that's what it shows me 43,000 subscribers and it's just like uh, I can barely get, if I'm lucky, 4,000 views on each video. So that's what that tells me is like, yeah, there's a lot of subscribers that just come and go. I darn near have to, to resort to clickbait in order to, not, so that's a that's very touchy. I mean, you it depends on who you ask, the viewer or the content creator, the YouTuber. Uh, I I respect y'all a lot and I I am very crafty with my titles in order to get those people to watch. So more often than not, you're gonna see me not put a fish in the thumbnail or I'm gonna use something where as you're watching the video, if you're a dedicated viewer, the light bulb goes off. Oh, that's why he used the title that he did. I mean, we as YouTubers have to get super crafty in order to stay in this game. You can't just like come up with bad titles or bad thumbnails and expect to make it in this uh, like online platform, uh, the world that we call YouTube, because then you're going to fail miserably. Nobody's going to watch your content and you may have a nice video. No one would ever know it. Why? Because you used a bad title. So, yeah. Um... I think that's going to do it, y'all. Thanks for watching this one. Don't forget to leave those comments down below. If you enjoyed it, hit that thumbs up button. And I will see y'all next time when we're off the water.